Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Urinary. Welcome to our Nemesis Pillow Tutorial Crochet Along Part 2, where we're making this awesome back. So grab what yarn you have left and your same hook and let's get started. So for Part 2 of our Nemesis Sunburst Granny Square Pillow, we need the same yarns we were working on, whatever you have left. We are going to try to finish it up with just this yarn and not need any more, depending on our luck. We're just going to rotate rows, so pick whatever color you want to start with. I suggest whatever color you have the least of, I think these are my least, uh, use those sooner, and the colors you have the most of, use later. Uh, the, the amount of yarn you're going to need for your rows is going to increase as your square increases. So keep that in mind and let's get started. So to make the back of the Nemesis Sunburst Granny Square pillow, we're just going to make one big granny square. So to start that, we're just going to make a slip knot and put that on your hook and chain three. One, two, three. Put your hook back into the center of that first chain you made. So it's on your hook. And then I lay my tail down so it's behaving and I pinch underneath there with my thumb and my finger just so I can hold that spot open as I slip stitch to close like that. So I'm still pinching right there in the middle. You can kind of see where it is. Chain three, one, oop. Both strands of yarn, please. Chain three, so one, two, three. And I'd make a double crochet right into the center where you're holding it with your thumb and your finger. So one double crochet and one more double crochet. So that's a chain three and two double crochets. So that's your first shell and the first side of your granny. Chain two. So back into that center, we're going to do three more double crochets. So wrap your yarn and Make your double crochets. Two and three. Chain two. One, two. Push your stitches back a little. So you just pinch your ring. Give those a tug back so you get some more space on your ring. And three more double crochets. One. Two, three. So see how we've gotten three sides of our square already. Push those stitches back a bit. Chain two, one, two, and three more double crochets into the center of the ring for our last side of our square. There's two and three. To join, we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet to the top of the top of this chain three. So just push your hook in. You want to get two loops on your hook and bring your yarn back and single crochet. So wrap your yarn and take off both loops. And now you can kind of hold your corner open. Chain three, one, two, three. Turn your work and two double crochets into this first spot, this first corner. And that makes half of this corner, one and two, like that. Now we're going to jump over to the next corner over here and make a corner. So wrap your yarn, three double crochets. 
one, two, and three. Chain two, push your stitches back, three more double crochets into the same corner. Two, three, wrap your yarn into the next corner. We're doing the same thing. So three double crochet, chain two, and three double crochet. And all your corners are going to be like that. Chain two and three more double crochets into the same spot. There we go. Jump over to the next corner, which is over here. So three double crochet, two, three, chain two, and then when these tails become annoying to you, just cut them off because we went over them in the beginning. So I did my three double crochet and my chain two, so push your stitches back and three more double crochets into the same spot, two and three. Now it looks a bit funny because we just did half a corner here. So we're going to go over into this space and finish. But when yours looks funny, it looks easy to just keep going around in a spiral and we don't want to do that. So keep an eye on this. You could have also used a stitch marker, which I'm sure I have a million, but you can also put a stitch marker in there when you begin so you know where you're where you where you need to put in your last corner we'll do that from now on so you can see but just keep a mind on that and into the next spot three double crochets one two three and now we're getting, I'm finished with this color. I'm just going to do two rows of each color. So now I'm going to chain two, one, two, and I'm going to slip stitch to join. So into the top of that chain three, two loops on my hook. I don't know why that chain is so tiny. Grab my yarn and bring it back and slip stitch to join. Chain one, cut my yarn, pull your loop, your hook up and your yarn through and tug this down to secure. Now these tails go around this corner here. So when you do your next corner, you're going to put six double crochets there. So that's really going to hold, hold it in. So it's going to go like that. There we go. You can bring it back if you want, but I think it'll be fine. So now pick your next color. Oops. Yikes. Um, I'm going to use yellow next. So I'm not going to join in this corner. I'm going to join in the previous corner. So put your hook in. loop a yarn on your hook, bring it through, slip stitch with both to join, drop your tail and chain two more, one and two. So that counts as your first double crochet and two more double crochets into that corner space, one and two. So that counts as three double crochets. Because we changed yarn, we don't need to put a stitch marker here, but the next round we will. And if you're not changing color, Put a stitch marker. So into the space over here, three double crochets into your side space. No chaining in between. The only chaining we're doing is in our actual corner. So there's three double crochets. And then into our next corner, we're going to do a corner. 
So three double crochets and I'm going over that tail so I can cut it off. Oops. Three double crochets, chain two, push your stitches back, three more double crochets into that same corner. Into the side, just three double crochets. One, two, and three into the corner. We're going to do a corner. So three double crochets. Chain two and three double crochets. You can push your stitches back if you need to. Let's give them a little tug. Into the side spot, three double crochets. One, two, three, into the corner, you do a corner, three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets, into the side, three double crochets, and now we're in our first corner where we started, so I'm going to finish this corner with three double crochets into the same space. One, two, and three. And because I'm doing two rows of each color, I'm going to be continuing my color. So I'm going to chain one and then single crochet to join. So into that top of the chain three, single crochet. And that just leaves us kind of in the center of that corner so we can hide our join. You won't see a chain going up. Chain three, two, three, turn your work. And we're also turning our work each row so that our square stays square and grows as a square. If we don't change, uh, if we don't um, switch directions or turn our work, each row kind of turns a bit more like that. So it looks a bit, it doesn't look totally straight when you look at the big square. So that's why we're turning our work. It's optional, it'll still work if you don't turn, but to you. So two more double crochets into that corner and now continue going around. The only difference on this round, and we can put our stitch marker in also, I get one that shows up. I like to put it into the space of where I need to put my corner. So now I know when I come around that is the spot I need to put my corner. So now I keep going this round. The only difference is you have two spaces on each side and into each space on each side you need to put three double crochets. It doesn't matter how big your square is. The side spots are always three double crochets and the corners like this are always three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets. So keep working your way around and I will meet you when we join this round. Now I've come around to my stitch marker and remember I put it into the spot so I know I have to put my hook right into where my stitch marker is and make three double crochets. One, two, and three. I can take my stitch marker out and I'm finished with this yellow color now so I'm going to chain two one and two and slip stitch to the top of the chain three to join. Chain one, cut your yarn, pull your hook up and your yarn through and 
snug this down to secure. And you can do your tail a little bit around this corner also before you get going too far just so you remember it. Poke it back the other way. There. I'm leaving these tails for now so that I know, like I'm going to have all my tails on one side of my work and that is just going to help me know what is my good side. Even though both sides are the same because we're flipping our work, we're turning, we're turning our work each row. Uh, I just want to know where my ends are going to be. But technically you could cut those off right now because you worked over them. So next color. So I'm just, you can join in any corner, but I'm just going to join into the corner previous to my last join. Just to even it out. And, I, and I've turned my work. So you know you're going into the other side because on the edge, where the row that you've just worked on, you can see these little V's are curved towards you. So you know that this is the way you were working on it before. So when you're joining your next color, make sure you don't see the V's. You see like, I call it macaroni, but you just see like kind of the messy, well, the back of the last row you did. So this is the bad side. That's the good side, because you can see those V's. Not the most important thing, but always good to be consistent if and when you can. So put your hook into the space, put a loop of your yarn on your hook, pull it through and slip stitch with both to join, drop your tail and chain two, one and two. So that counts as your first double crochet and two more double crochets into the same corner spot, one and two, drop your tails and keep going now doing your shells. So on this row, every row you gain an extra side shell or an extra space to build a shell. So on this round we have three spots to build our shells and shells are sets of three double crochet. So you're just going to go across and whatever is on the side of your work is a side and whatever is pointy is the corner. And you should only have four corners. Unless, of course, you're doing something else. So keep working your way around and I'll meet you at the join. So at the join, chain one and single crochet to the top of that chain three, which I cannot see, but I am going to guess. I know where it should be. A single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, turn your work. I do two double crochets straight away, one and two. And now grab your stitch marker and put it in that corner space where you're going to finish that corner. Just so you can see it when you come around. And I'll go ahead and finish this row and I'll meet you when you get back to here. So I've gotten back to my stitch marker. So I'm going to finish my three double crochets into that same spot. Two, three, and because I'm finished with this color, I'm going to chain two and slip stitch to join. Oops, lost me on. There we go. There we go. Slip stitch to join, chain one and cut your yarn, pull your loop, pull your hook up and your loop out and snug down to secure. 
This tail also we can just work in a little bit back around that corner because that is going to help us not have to do our ends. Which obviously is the main goal. Okay, there we go. So now we're ready to join our next color and it just keeps working up the same way. So now just keep working, adding two rows of whatever yarn you want to use next. And I just want to show you how to measure it, how to make sure it's the right size. The simple thing to do is just put your front panel down and then pop this one on top. And then you're like, oh yeah, look, same size. And this has another row on it. This has a row of double crochet going all the way around. But how I like to measure to make sure that it is the right size and I'm going to have the same stitches when I'm joining them together is to make sure I have the same stitches when I'm joining them together. So I'm going to line up, let me zoom in a bit, I'm going to line up this corner of my back so I'm going to put my little finger in this, in this one and into the green. I'm ignoring this blue, this blue row. We're pretending that's not there. We're going to measure it against the granny square to granny square. So this, these three clusters, easy, and then the three clusters on that side. So those line up. Next three, next three, three, three right? Three and three. Three and three gets you to the corner. But now, remember, we did this join. And at the join, that counts, the join itself counts as one shell because we made those stitches to be three stitches. So this join gets one cluster. So from one corner and then three stitches to get to the other corner. So that's an adding of a cluster. And then just keep lining up your sets of three for your granny squares across. To this side, so now we're in this corner. Well, not corner. Well, I guess it's kind of a corner, but the join. So the join gets a, an entire shell because up top we're going to need those stitches to line up up here. So that is three stitches. And then keep going, dividing your three and three. And I have two shells left. So I need to do one more round because there will be one shell on this side and one shell over here. So that if there's two shells left, that means you need one more round. So I finished this last round, or it's not the last round, but I, com I completed the round I was on. So I know I need to add six stitches. So what I'm going to do is, so that my back panel doesn't get too much bigger, then my front panel, but keep the same stitch count, is this round I am going to make it into my double crochet round. So now I'm in my corner space, I'm going to do two double crochets. I'm not turning my work this round because this is going to be my last round of double crochets for my back panel. So two double crochets into that same corner space. And then one double crochet into each stitch going back. And that first one is that weird little chain, so I'm just going to go into that hole right there. So that one gets a double crochet and then each stitch going back one double crochet and I'll meet you at the next corner. So my last double crochet before the corner and then into the corner I'm going to do three double crochets. One, two, three, and a chain two, although I probably could just do a chain one. 
and three more double crochets into that corner. You can push your stitches back if you need more space so they all sit in that corner. You want to be able to get at that first double crochet so you don't want your stitches covering that up. But now my first double crochet is right there. I can totally see it. That guy. So one double crochet into each double crochet of the previous round. Repeat this going all the way around your work and I'll meet you at the join. So in the corners, instead of chaining two, I think a chain one works nicer, my opinion, up to you, but I just did a chain one. Uh, to join, I'm also going to do a chain one and a slip stitch to the top of the chain three to join and a chain one to secure. Cut your yarn, pull your hook up and your yarn out and you finished your back panel. So we have finished our back. Super excited about it. Don't worry if it's a little bit of a different size than your, mine see a little bit smaller than my front panel. But remember, the front panel is going to get stretched where it's dinged in. So it's kind of like not blocked, I guess is how you'd say it properly. So it's totally going to fit. We have the same number of stitches on each side. So when we're joining, it's going to join beautifully. And that is what we want. And that's what we're doing in part three. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. And thanks so much for watching. Stay hooked.